Hello everyone and welcome to this session of the Aussie Live Conference called The Journey of Embracing Change in the Classroom. This has been brought to you by one of my very special online friends, Veronica Wu, and I've had the great pleasure of meeting her face to face and she probably was one of my very first online connections even though we probably didn't collaborate or connect properly until a couple of years later. So Veronica, it's great to have you with us. Your topic, uh, the journey of embracing change in the classroom, is one that's very pertinent to many of us, wondering how we are going to be able to embrace it, because change is coming. Uh, we can't run this conference without our sponsors and supporters. So Blackboard Collaborate, the Australia E-Series, Cyber Academy, Coach Carol, The Learning Revolution and Shambles have all been instrumental in helping us support, organise and run this conference. So a big thank you to them. We would love to know where in the world you are from. So if you just grab this pointer tool, maybe click on that first. If you find this to the left hand side of the board, click on it and then you can click on one of the little smiley faces. You can tell us where in the world you're from. So Melma, are you able to work that out? You just click on, oh, I can't use that. Right, <laughs> Some, I'm going to try and put you on, but you and Veronica are going to be very close together. So how about I get a map shambles? So shambles is up there somewhere in Thailand. So great to have you with us. Oops, now I'm putting it in China. They are shambles, I hope that's close enough. Okay, um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Veronica and she's going to talk all about that embracing change. Thank you, Veronica. So, Veronica, don't forget to click your talk button because I asked you to drop the mic. So, up the top left hand corner, click talk and away you go. Thanks, Anne. Uh, greetings to you and Veronica. Um, I come from the land of diverse cultures in Malaysia. And as you can see from this slide here, uh, a very colourful picture. It's a picture of uh, a foreign student, exchange students who are here in Malaysia. Um, the, uh, with the uh, American Field Service and the students are students who come here on a yearly basis and every year we have uh, new students coming into Malaysia and this very blouse was taken some years back and the girls that you can see here they are from uh, Germany, most of them and one from America and one from Japan and the two gentlemen here and myself we were volunteers for this uh, American Field Service and over here is called the Antara Budaya Malaysia Right, as you can see here, uh, that's the logo that I set up when we were doing a global project for this uh, green tourism under the Iron uh, Learning Circle project and I used that as a sort of like kind of a tag for myself and that's my school logo. Alright, um, yeah, so that's sort of basically something about myself and uh, I was privileged enough to have uh, spent two years, spent two, two years in New Zealand when I was uh, doing my university uh, degree there in uh, the University of Otago. Right, and uh, that sort of like uh, in a way uh, provided me with a lot of uh, learning experiences and, and I'm still learning today. Okay, I think I shall move on to the next uh, slide. Okay, so I think some of us here will be, I'm not sure, will be very familiar with this uh, gadget here and it was, uh, it was born during the time when uh, the telephone was with, uh, with a, di uh, di a dollar, right? And I think if it's in today's uh, children, if you ask them if they have seen this, uh, this could be sort of a rather strange uh, object for them and I think even uh, many of us wouldn't even want to use this kind of telephone anymore. Uh, perhaps we need maybe for people who are uh, keen on collecting antiques, they would have this in their homes, right? Yeah, um, and that sort of a, give you an idea of the kind of background that I come from, whether I'm from the uh, baby boomers time or Gen, Gen X, Gen Y or Gen Z, Z, 
Right, so uh, I think yeah, I'm from the baby boomers uh, generation, and uh, that's why the journey of uh, embracing change in the classroom is uh, really something that uh, it's not something that you say that, okay, if I come from the baby boomers time, then that's not this kind of stuff is not for me. But I think that the embracing change and in order to do a part uh, well in the classroom, uh, it is indeed that we have to change, be changing all the time in our uh, the approaches and methods that we use in the classroom. Because I think that, as we always say, that uh, the only constant in life is change. Right. Yeah, can, uh, maybe I'll move on to the uh, next slide here. All right, embracing change in the classroom. Um, why is it that I've uh, used this uh, photograph? Um, can anyone guess? Would you like to guess? Why? Uh, sort of like a, I have used this uh, reflexology path as a way to uh, convey the idea of embracing change in the classroom. Um, as, uh, I, I don't know what you think. But if you have stepped on a reflexology uh, path before, then you would know that there are, at times it's not really very comfortable to walk on the uh, reflexology path. So that's exactly that kind of uh, feelings that we get in when we are walking on the reflexology path. So it's the same when we are trying to do something which is uh, uh, out of the norm, uh, away from the way of uh, normal practices in the classroom. So, uh, but of course, you can see here the heart there, the pebbles in the middle. So I think sort of that that kind of uh, you need to have that kind of spirit and a, a kind of a, a kind of uh, what do you call it, a, a passion, okay, for for wanting to do something um, for yourself and also for the st students uh, in a classroom. Um, and and with that, I suppose uh, no obstacles would be too big to uh, cross to overcome. Uh, yeah, so I got this from one of the, uh, I, I think I've got it here, put down the picture illustration is from one of these websites. Okay, and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. life is like reflexology, lots of so without being, <laughs> without being a few. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. And uh, if you see this photograph here, this is actually a photograph of my niece, and she was together with me when we went to visit Anne uh, during the last December holidays. And uh, she was actually doing this canopy walk as one of the uh, uh, this leadership and uh, team building uh, training course in one of the lovely resorts here in Malaysia, uh, in, in fact, in my home state of Para. And I can see this other photograph here is actually taken from a tourist uh, uh, site here in Ipoh, right? So I was just thinking, ah, oh, put these two together, what do I get? You see, sort of convey the idea of stepping out of your comfort zone. Right, so because uh, there's this here uh, human uh, fear of the unknown, and uh, it's, it's not easy to uh, change. So that's why people are always uh, resistant to change. It's not only for the teachers, and also for students and anyone else in, in their life. Uh, what more about our role as teachers in the classroom? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just, if you look at this canopy walk, uh, just wondering how many of us would be actually there to take up this uh, challenge to, I mean, climb up so high and, and walk you know, on this kind of a, a canopy walk up in, in, in a tree top stand. Right. Mm -hmm. Now move on to the next uh, slide. Yeah, the journey begins. I think this is something which uh, not everyone uh, got to know about me. Uh, there was some many. This happened how many years ago? Twenty is it twenty one years ago? Right. So twenty one years ago, uh, this was uh, during the time when uh, computers were very new here in Malaysia. I'm not too sure about other parts of the world, but I suppose that also uh, computers were introduced uh, uh, quite new in even other parts of the world. And I remember that uh, during that time, uh, the, the kind of computers that we use in the classroom, and actually computers were not uh, 
really a part of the furniture in the classroom. So here it says learning made easier thanks to teacher Wu. And this idea of setting up a self-assessed learning center. So it came about when I was given this task by my uh, uh, headmaster, because uh, prior to that I was uh, in another school, and I was given this uh, challenge to set up a language laboratory. So I was thinking, yeah, because over here, language laboratory is actually very expensive. Uh, you get the experts to do it. You have to pay, uh, uh, at that time, it was about 100,000 over ringgit. So, so I told my principal, OK, you, you trust me. Uh, let me think of a way out. Uh, I can work together with the technicians, the electricians, and uh, people who uh, you know about computers. So what are we going to do? So, uh, so instead of language laboratory, so I said, why not we set up a self-assessed uh, learning center? So uh, that's how I put the computers into a, one section of this uh, learning center. The, the students get to go into the computer room, what's called a computer room, to explore and uh, teach themselves to do certain things. But of course, uh, oh, um, because of the uh, learning style here, uh, here uh, which is sort of rather very rigid because uh, of the, uh, the way students are being uh, assessed here, uh, a, a lot of road learning. So I got to get my um, neighbor kids to actually teach me first and then uh, get them to come in to help out with the students when they needed help. That was way back in 1993. So they would go into the room and then they would try to uh, do uh, work out uh, certain things on the computers. And that time, uh, the uh, rapid uh, software was very uh, popular uh, here in, in Malaysia and that kind of a, you know, a lot of a language where you actually have to uh, know uh, the, the technical part of it, of uh, control, press, what, and that kind of thing. A lot of the computer language, all right? So it was not user, so you, uh, user friendly at all during the time. So that, that it was even, uh, it, it faced even more uh, resistance from people who wanted to change. So I, I was just thinking, okay, just put a computer and see what happens. Right. So the next slide here, it shows that that was the kind of computer that we were using. So, so how, how about uh, you all? Uh, I'm not too sure. So was it like this way back in the 1990s, early 1990s, the, the kind of computers that you were using in the classroom? Uh, this is, OK. OK. I don't think that our school had computers then, so you are a real kind of <laughs> Yeah. OK. I don't know whether I was a pioneer, but in some ways, I was just thinking, yeah. So. Uh, try to do something with it, but uh, but if you look at the next slide, it sort of says something. Because from 1993 to 2005, that's about a uh, lapse of about uh, how many years would that be? 12 years. So people are wondering what happened during that lapse uh, of 12 years. What were you doing in whatever computers? Uh, there was a time when I was given a, a government scholarship to further my studies in uh, New Zealand. And in fact, I took up a one-year uh, computers and education paper at the University of Otago. And when I came back to Malaysia at the time, I was posted to teach in another school. And I just found that, well, com I mean, comparatively, um, Malaysia at the time was really uh, way behind time. There's a lot that you have to catch up. Because I remember when I was in New Zealand in the mid-1990s, it's like it's as if the, the whole country was uh, very uh, well connected, all wired up, even for very basic things like a normal uh, kind of transaction, you know, that we had to do in the shops, like even buying an ice cream, just use your card and the card was just useful or anything like going to libraries. So, when I, so I was sort of like in uh, not really, uh, I mean, because of, I had to sort of step back and see what's happening. So it was sort of like in a, uh, way, uh, it was winter time in Malaysia, hibernation mode, okay. So then, uh, was given this opportunity when uh, we were given uh, this chance to participate in the Selcom Youth Ambassador Project. And uh, all the schools who particip participated in this program, they have to come up with a uh, uh, creative idea of uh, ending that the thing would uh, sort of like uh, uh, have certain uh, benefits to society. 
So the students then are like to brainstorm and then they come up with the idea and say, why not we do something along that line like a, a, no, a tomorrow's uh, school project? Because at that time, uh, in 2005, uh, the, the idea of the education was still like a, a very much confined to the classroom, the four walls of the classroom. Excuse me. Uh, so at that time, it was like, uh, if you notice from the first slide and this slide, there's a, uh, a, a, a slight a change in the slogan here. Because the first slide that you saw was like, the world is a classroom, and the classroom is the world. And at that time, it was like, the community is your classroom, the classroom is your community. So that was like, a, how do we go about to change people's mindset? So let us not, not too far away, we look at our own community. Uh, even the school community, community. Uh, uh, is it the idea of like just uh, if, if the idea of education is just between uh, in the classroom setting, in the school setting, you get the teachers and the students to be uh, sort of uh, teaching or learning from each other? Uh, is that what it's all about, or is it a one-way kind of delivery uh, uh, system of uh, le uh, uh, lessons? So uh, we brainstorm a lot of that. So we say. Uh, if you look at how uh, schools are functioning uh, even today, uh, is it more like a factory? Uh, why is it that we need to have like a, in a classroom or students of a, a same age group, but in families, uh, children from each other, but in families you can see the younger ones and the older ones, they're all together in the family and they actually learn uh, from each uh, other. So there's no such thing as, a, I mean, uh, education is such, sort of like, you, if you're at a certain age, then is uh, you're age bound by the this certain age uh, to stick on to your group. So it's, it's a lot of complexities in that. So uh, then, um, I think that is a more the pedagogical stuff, which I'm not going to talk about today. But if you look at this now, uh, you can see the local community there, so we get uh, even the Malaysian Can Association, even the Defenders and all these uh, NGOs to come to the school to do something for the community, and that is learning, is broad-based learning. And uh, so then after some time we thought, why not we include the international community? That's when we got to know uh, about this school from New Zealand, which is a truly Maori uh, school with a very distinctive Maori culture. Hachapara College uh, in New Zealand. And at that time, video conferencing was really expensive here in, in New Zealand because uh, we, we went to, uh, we went out to sort of, a, uh, Skype wasn't that, uh, uh, streaming of Skype wasn't that smooth here. Uh, I don't know about other parts of the world. So we went to a number of places like Telecom Malaysia and we visited the video conferencing room and all this. But the uh, quotation that we got for that to have this kind of services uh, it was really uh, very highly priced, which uh, the school couldn't afford. In fact, we already got some context from the Great Ocean uh, Barrier Reef in, uh, in Australia, and they actually wanted to Skype in with, uh, to, uh, to video conference with us as well, the centers, the school kids and everything. But because of the cost factor, and we, uh, we couldn't get uh, uh, funding for that, so sort of that we just uh, that in a bike burner and then after that, um, so uh, New Zealand, the school in New Zealand, so we thought of way to, to how to sort of communicate and collaborate with each other. So we came up with our own uh, special production of a DVD and we sent it to each other. The most that we could do with internet then was using uh, the emails. Right, so I move on to the next one. Um, okay, so and then uh, later on in that year, uh, we got some of these uh, volunteers with the Iron Project people and we came to the school and my principal talked to me about that and he asked me, what do you think of this idea of uh, students taking part in the six Asian student exchange program? And that was supposed to be, at uh, that time, was held in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. So we grabbed this opportunity and this was a program that we have to do uh, also uh, online and as well as uh, finally uh, the whole thing was wrapped up with the face-to-face uh, -face, uh, meeting in uh, Taiwan for five days. That was near Christmas time. Because I remember the New Year's uh, Christmas Eve uh, party that the, the students and the 
teachers and the professors and everyone had at in Kaohsiung and everyone enjoyed themselves so much. But if you can see here, the screen here is that is actually using the uh, one of these uh, technical uh, support for streaming, uh, which was provided by uh, the Taiwan uh, Ministry of uh, I think Education. Uh, well, in one of their in one of their bureaus of education in, in Taiwan, so that was sort of like the, the not a, the, the the kind of a tools which is uh, globally available, but because we're doing that project in Taiwan, so they could share that tool with us. All right. Um. Hmm. So we we'll move on to the next one. Uh, how much time do I have? Right, the ICT tools used in the early stage, that was this, the Taiwan Connection, the Ajet, yeah, they call it the Ajet Video Conferencing Platform. And that was not really very user-friendly, like what we have now, Google Hangout and Skype, because there was a lot of technical kind of stuff that you need to do before you set up. You could set up that uh, streaming uh, uh, system to run you know, for both countries. So a lot of hiccups there. Now move on to the next one. Uh, that and that is the one when, the, the, towards the end of the uh, project, the three-month program, the, the students and, uh, and I and we make a trip to Taiwan to meet up with the project partners, the two teachers here, the uh, Taiwanese teachers and the students here in the background here. Uh, in behind in the background here, they are from uh, Taiwan. So they were our project partners in the uh, project topic that they were working on was actually, what was it called? Yeah, the theme was uh, our Earth, our home. Right. They, they were actually, uh, uh, it, it was a, a project that the students learned a, a lot on uh, even discovering themselves, learn how to uh, communicate and open up themselves to others. So uh, a lot of interaction, even online, uh, and, and the most exciting part was uh, when they were hosted by uh, Taiwanese families. So that was a very good fellowship and a very enriching experience, both for the students and the teachers. And the students and the teachers and students, they were all from uh, at least, I think, six countries in Asia. Right, and move on to the next one. Hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, this one. Yeah, and. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Sam Bashfield from Australia, and I don't know if you remember this. He was actually the one uh, whom I got to uh, email you, and uh, uh, I, I can't really remember exactly, but maybe you can remember. Was he the one who wrote in to you first and then say that, okay, um, uh, do we, can we get in touch and uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, uh, school can do something, the students? Uh, your students and my students, and I remember that question that Isha, you asked him, and that was very interesting, and both of us, uh, I mean, I, I hope you don't mind, we really had a good laugh, because when you asked a friend, uh, does Veronica speak English? And then Sam was looking, yeah, does Veronica, do you speak English? And I said, oh, <laughs> what do you think? And then said, <laughs> so he just had a good laugh, okay. So that was doing the peace partition drive, and you can see this photo here. Uh, this is uh, Sam today. Uh, that is actually the photo uh, taken from his uh, Facebook uh, profile photo, and, uh, and that, I think it was just uh, one or two weeks ago. And Sam told me that uh, this week, I think, was it this week that he'll be going to uh, Korea? Is it Korea for five months? Okay. Sorry, I know I feel very embarrassed about that question. No, uh, I really blame you. <laughs> okay, so I can understand. So uh, anyway, uh, I would have asked uh, maybe even worse question than this, you know, if I were to connect with uh, anybody else from other parts of the world. I, I wouldn't know. Okay, but anyway, it was all a learning experience I have for me, and I guess it's probably the same for you as well. Right, the next one. Yeah, this one. Uh -huh. So uh, I think you can remember this. Uh, that I think this is one of those earlier uh, lessons that we have with your students, introducing the lay customs and tradition. Right? And the next one here, uh, the video conferencing uh, between Hub International Boys School in New Zealand in uh, our school. And uh, this was actually at the invitation uh, from the local college here where they invited us to be 
uh, a part of the uh, program for English Week. And so uh, we suggested that why not we do a Skype video conferencing with the school, e-learning adventure with the, the school in uh, New Zealand. Right. And the next one, uh, that, uh, yeah, this is what was uh, performed by the boys from High International Boys School in New Zealand. They're performing the haka, and uh, the audience over here in Malaysia, uh, they really enjoy it very much, and uh, some of them, I don't think they, have, they know what a haka is. So that was a great learning experience for them. And the next one, right. So, uh, suppose you can remember this, and it's a 2011 Melbourne Innovations Showcase, and uh, these were the two photographs which you sent me, and the students, uh, that's what you could see on your side, the students were, yeah, right, wow, great, yeah, skiing at Mount Hunt, that's very interesting, yeah, I did try skiing at the, what is it called? Uh, Cor Coronet Peak, yeah, in Queensland. Yeah, this picture is from, uh, yeah, this photograph was sent to me by Anne during our students' uh, a showcase of uh, what it's like uh, to uh, actually uh, getting the two sides to video conference with each other. In the uh, photo, the original photograph here uh, on the bottom left-hand corner, is actually the uh, educators and the teachers in Australia who were uh, Skyping in with us, and I would say that one is the students performing the lion dance uh, sketch. Okay, they were just, I think there was choral reading and uh, they were dancing and things like that, okay. And the next one, uh, this is when uh, Anne visited us. I think that was your second visit, if I'm not mistaken. Because the first one was when Anne came to our school to train the teachers and students uh, for Web 2.0 uh, learning in the classroom, something like that. Right, and here, uh, this was to the certificate presentation ceremony, because uh, during a performance at the Skype video conferencing uh, for this innovation showcase, uh, so the we, we were awarded certificates of appreciation by the uh, um, minist uh, Ministry of uh, Education in Victoria, I think, uh, and then it was signed by the Minister of Education of Victoria State uh, himself. So, uh, so everyone was very happy that day, and you can see here, you can see the New Zealand, and I'm sorry, not New Zealand, Australian, Malaysian uh, flags here. So it uh, shows that they uh, fellowship between the two countries and the two schools, and the connection between the two schools and the two countries. Um, yeah, can I move on? The next one, this is the Melbourne Writers' Festival 2011, and uh, this was also at the invitation of Anne, and she was asking uh, us whether we could do something with her students. Uh, that was for the uh, global storytelling. Uh -huh. Your computer works. <laughs> okay, can understand that. Okay, so uh, these are the two uh, student presenters on our side, uh, and they were uh, I think uh, Jasmine here. Uh, he was uh, he made a video on this uh, the Wayang Kuli, uh, this uh, what do you call shadow play, right? Uh, slide uh, video, okay, and uh, this girl here, uh, Mazri. She came up with the uh, slide to show to show the story about uh, what is it? the Peranakan, okay, the Straits Settlement Chinese. So they were actually uh, sharing this uh, book uh, that they have read, and uh, they were making a book trailer on that, and was shared during the Melbourne Writers Festival, which was skyped to the Federation Square in uh, Australia. And that's on the big screen, and this was sent to me by Anne. Uh, and here you could see the Malaysian flag here, and this is the big screen at the Federation Square. And I finally got to see for myself the Federation Square in Australia when I went to Melbourne uh, and I visited Anne last December holidays. 
Hmm, it's a great place. And here you can see all the, uh, the guests of honor who were invited to uh, witness uh, firsthand what it was like to for schools to actually uh, be doing collaborate, uh, collaboration work with each other in the power of the technology uh, to connect people and to knock down barriers and to change the whole conception of uh, what education is about. Right. Uh, so in, uh, in a way, sort of like, a, uh, I, I, I do not, because some of the uh, audience here, he, when the event ended, they talked to me, uh, could see that uh, in, they were coming at an angle like a, they have a, the, the mindset uh, sort of like, oh, this, oh, I never thought that things could be done this way. So in, in a way, when they say things like this to, to me, I thought that, yeah, there's a, maybe it's, at least a change in the mindset. But whether they really implement it, that is a different thing altogether. But at least uh, uh, there's something to start off with, that there's uh, people uh, able to see the other side of what it's like if you are willing to change. Right. And here was during the chorus speaking presentation, you know, during the Visit Parrot Year 2012, and uh, our school was part of the uh, uh, kind of the whole program to promote uh, Visit Parrot Year in uh, 2011. That was before they actually launched Visit Parrot Year uh, at the end of the year uh, of, the, of the year 2011. And this was Skype, uh, and this was this event here uh, during the official launch where our chorus speaking team were actually uh, delivering a, a chorus speaking uh, piece to promote uh, all the lovely places here in Terra and uh, there's when we also invited the founder of Hello Little World Skypers, there's Catherine. So she was Skyping with us and she was one of the uh, inter uh, virtual international audience. Okay. This this one was here when everyone was waiting for the, the event to start. So it, so it, it's like you know you see uh, Catherine was waiting there and we were sort of like just uh, trying to uh, get ourselves away here as well. So the next one here, uh, here, this is the chorus speaking team, and uh, they had been performing for at least eight times here in the uh, para to promote the, uh, I think you put the thing of all this, right, <laughs> okay, yeah. The next one was, uh, okay, this is uh, Christopher Hurst. Uh, Christopher Hurst, I actually got to know about Christopher Hurst from uh, Anne's uh, uh, blog. Uh, because Anne, I remember you, you, what was it that you had a very special program with him, you know, where students learn uh, the uh, art of writing from uh, Christopher Hurst, who's a writer uh, from Boston. Is it like something like lunch, lunch something, lunch box or something like that? that the students will actually uh, spend their uh, recess time or the lunch hour uh, with uh, Christopher stepping in and you, you get him sort of to share his, uh, his uh, expertise with the students. And this one was when I got Christopher Hurst to step in with the Northern writers here. Because we have the, uh, a group of uh, uh, local writers here uh, where they get to actually meet each other on a uh, fortnightly basis and they will always want to come up with uh, some uh, programs, some ideas to share with uh, the local community. And that's how I was invited by uh, Martin Bradley, who is uh, actually a, a permanent uh, a PR here, permanent resident here in Malaysia on the second home program. And he invited our students to perform for the local audience and also to perform for Christopher Hurst and also Christopher Hurst got to interact with the local community. That's how in a way uh, we reach out to uh, change even uh, in a way hoping to change people's mindset about uh, how drug-based education can actually be about to know. It's not only that uh, it has to be confined to the four walls in the classroom, in the school, and in certain boundaries. So that's why it's a borderless world. And uh, thanks to technology for that. But the most challenging part is actually knocking down the walls of the minds of the people. That they will actually move out of the comfort zone and they will want to uh, go out into the unknown and take the risk and do something about it. Because it's easy to say, take baby steps, do this, take baby steps and do that. But I think if 
they're at the level that they, they have not even thought about change, then um, that's where we ha really have to work hard on. Right, there's the next one of the I Earn Learning Circle project in 2011. Uh, this is a group, uh, the students are partner school from uh, the States and they came from a place called Balloons, if I'm not mistaken. And from this uh, interaction and this communication, this collaboration here, that we actually got to learn the, from them that their place is actually the uh, what, birthplace of Coca-Cola. And that was very interesting. And, uh, and this, was the, and this is the wiki space that we created for this project under a green tourism project. And you can see that some of the schools are project partners here. And the other school was a project partner here is uh, actually from the Philippines, uh, Malin, Ma, Malin Broughton or something like this. She's from the Philippines. And I sometimes do see her on Skype and we do chat and we do ask each other about you know, how, how you're doing with your projects uh, in the Philippines and she will ask me uh, likewise. Right, and uh, this is random Skype video conferencing. This is with a school in America. I think uh, I, I did not have my students then because of the time zone uh, difference. Uh, you know, 12 uh, hours uh, difference between our two uh, continents or two countries. So I think that was 12 noon over there uh, in the States, and uh, I was over here in Malaysia, 12 a.m., right, early in the morning, so I did not have my students with you, but uh, with me. But then, uh, anyway, so I, I think the idea of students, our students, it uh, doesn't necessarily uh, mean to sort of confine to our uh, real students, in, uh, I mean, in the physical world, but even students in the virtual world. Uh, that's uh, how uh, I see the uh, role that teachers could play in the uh, borderless uh, world uh, uh, that, uh, that we are having, uh, I mean, that we are in now. And the same goes for education. But I, I know that in businesses they are moving very fast. It's just that in education, uh, it's moving very slow and even slower here in Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not too sure. But uh, maybe you could tell me something, could learn from you. And this is one of the uh, other projects that we took part in. It's a global virtual classroom project and uh, Finnish Health. That was uh, the one that we took part in last year. And we, uh, our project partners here were from the States, uh, Manchville High School. And the other one was from La Salle, from Spain. And uh, with the three schools working together, uh, collaborating, connecting, and all this, and uh, creating videos and creating websites and all this, uh, we managed to emerge as a runner-up uh, for this uh, Global Virtual Classroom Website Design Competition. And this year, uh, we are also taking part in, in the competition. And uh, here you can see that that was, uh, the, what was that? the leadership and team building camp that we had in Lumut and uh, you know, huh? yeah, and yeah, you have been to this uh, uh, place before, but we did not stay at this uh, resort. But it was like, uh, we were staying at another hotel, which was uh, just about maybe 10 to 15 minutes away from this resort. So the students here, they came here to actually um, hone, uh, learn and pick up some skills to uh, develop the confidence to build, build, to build uh, I mean, to learn about problem solving skills. So they need to have these skills before they can actually uh, put themselves in the globalized uh, world, in the globalized classroom. So, uh, so this aspect is very important. That's why the students uh, uh, had to go for this kind of training uh, uh, on our level here, at our level here. So here, uh, and some of these people here, they are, they are the professional trainers. Huh? Right. Here, the ICT tools that we have used so far, so I think you can see all this for yourself, and I think some of you will be very familiar with all these tools, and then there's actually much more than this, right? But we just need the time to, to, to learn up all these uh, tools and all this. But uh, time is always a problem, it's always an issue with me, but um, perhaps uh, maybe uh, the reason, uh, maybe, uh, I don't know about other uh, teachers, um, and in other parts of the world, if they want to do something which is uh, out of the norm, the normal practice, uh, it is very challenging here, uh, I mean, from my own experience, because 
uh, we still have to, in the government school, you have to stick on to the traditional ways of doing things because uh, people don't, I mean, even the schools don't change overnight. So you have to fulfill certain requirements that the school expects you to do, that the Ministry of Education expects you to do, and all the paperwork and all this kind of thing. And coupled with that, so I was just thinking, uh, I mean, I'm not going to get stuck with this, and the students are not going to stuck with this kind of environment. So why? So, uh, so we have to we have to do something which is a parallel at the same time to uh, doing something which is on a more a traditional ways of doing things. Not because uh, we, we, we like doing it, we like doing it, but we just got no choice, right? So that uh, uh, so that I mean, we don't get ourselves into sort of like a, a messy situation with uh, sometimes you no know, some in, in some ways we don't have that much of a, a, a autonomy. All right. All right. So are you ready for change? Okay, that was the question which was asked. Are you ready for change? Um, I, I think it's not really asked. I mean, the question which we can ask, uh, uh, even ask ourselves, are we ready for change? So what is, what is change? But I think um, change is a, a constant. And, and even in our lives, we have to keep on changing all the time. But are we ready for change? Uh, I've been over here in Malaysia because of a certain projects we carry out by the I mean, Ministry of Education. Uh, it's not a question that we have a choice that we can say, no, I'm not ready, so I'm not going to do this. But I'll tell you more about this later on. So what is your level of change? So uh, I think that question is very important when we talk to people about change because uh, if you're dealing with people, because Sometimes when, uh, when we do training with uh, students, with teachers, and even with adult classes, uh, because we have the uh, uh, students and uh, learners coming from uh, all sorts of uh, background and uh, abilities, so they come with different uh, levels of change as well. Because if you are dealing with people who are at level of change that, uh, for example, is, for instance, a level of change one, they say, oh, I have not even talked uh, thoughts about change, so why are we talking about change? So that is the most difficult part. You know, the, 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 I think that the hardcore and the, the most difficult and the most challenging uh, 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 mindset that we, we actually if we, if we want to deal with. But uh, it is not for us to change anyone's uh, mindset. It's actually for people to sort of come to terms with themselves regarding change, then I think they will change. Right? But uh, for some people, they are always changing all the time. Then that, that is no uh, uh, issue at, at all, because then it's easy. They'll just go with the flow but when it comes to change. So this is the one, Welcome to Frog. That is one of the uh, platforms. It's called the Frog, uh, Frog uh, what is it called? Virtual Learning Environment, which is provided for by the Ministry of Education here in Malaysia. And it is provided to, this kind of a platform is provided uh, to all uh, the schools, almost all the schools here in Malaysia, 10,000 schools are involved, and that will sort of uh, uh, translate into 10 million users, because uh, the people who are provided with this kind of platforms include the school teachers, the, uh, the students, and also the uh, parents, and plus the uh, local community. Because uh, this is according to the education blueprint here in Malaysia, the, the Shift number seven and shift number nine is something to do with using technology and also getting the local community to be involved. But that is really a new continuity. You know. So uh, it is really a, um, it's a really huge, huge kind of a, a, a task, a challenge, you know, uh, for many uh, people here. But uh, but then uh, somehow. I think slowly when people see, begin to see the benefits of this kind of change, I think they will change. Mm. I mean, okay, if you look at the next one here, uh, this is just to give you an idea of what the Frog VLE uh, platform is like. Uh, like uh, so since because I'm the, uh, for my school, I'm the Frog VLE coordinator, and uh, I'm also the uh, person who is helping to do all the administrative work virtually here online. So this is the one set up by me. All right. So if you scroll down, all this is only a screen ca capture. So this is part of that whole screen here. So it, it's something like a uh, function, like a Facebook, and function like a uh, what it got, got. It's all in one kind of thing, like a blog and everything. So here you can share information virtually with uh, your students, with the community, with any anyone. So this is the one. 
Uh, because if you are the administrator, then you will have this uh, privilege of edit here, so you can put in things here and all this. So, uh, for instance, if let's say N schools want to be a part of this virtual uh, VLE, so what I can do as an administrator, I will provide, I will create an account for her and uh, for her school, and then she can be a part of this uh, Frog VLE platform here uh, in my school. Okay, so I uh, let you have a look at the next one. And the next one would be, okay, this is uh, every teacher, every student, every pa parent will be provided their own uh, with their own dashboard. Uh, so this is my own dashboard here. And you can see here, OZ Live online conference, all right? So here, the, here you can make announcements and you can share with people. Uh, and then uh, that's how you, uh, you, you, you announce uh, certain things like that. Uh, uh, share things with your friends, just like in Facebook and uh, WhatsApp or whatever uh, kind of tools that we have nowadays. So uh, this dash, uh, dashboard is actually uh, something like what you call uh, creating your own branding. So it's, it's just like in blogging. So what kind of, uh, how do you want to introduce yourself uh, to uh, people who visit your blog? So that is branding. So that's this kind of term that we use now in uh, uh, present day, the 21st century kind of a, 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 what do you call it, the uh, environment. Right, so uh, so everyone, uh, so they can, uh, it's up to the individuals to de design their own dashboard. So it, it starts with actually uh, literally nothing here, so you put in all the things that you want here, the stuff is all very interactive, you have the video, everything, external link and everything here. So. So if you look at here, this button here on the left, that is actually where uh, everyone, uh, everyone's dashboard will appear and you click on the right here, that is actually where everyone will have the common, will be able to see the common school platform. That was the one which I showed you uh, just before this uh, slide, the school dashboard. All right, and this is the students. All right, this, uh, these are the students. Uh, the students are doing their Chromebook training. Uh, so they have, you have to get the students to activate their account to explore the internet first. And, uh, and one of my colleagues was quick to say that, oh, you allow students to use Facebook in the classroom. Then I was just telling them, uh, all right, because I know Facebook, um, especially here in Malaysia, could be a kind of very sensitive kind of thing here in Malaysia because of, uh, there's a lot of misuse of it as well. So, but I told them that this is just for students to explore and then we discover things and we discuss. So, what we should use, uh, what uh, would be, I mean, not to say should use, what would be better, you know, if you want to use it for educational purposes. Facebook is very good actually. It all depends if there's a no misuse, you know, how you want to create your group, professional talk, or your students talking, that kind of thing, sharing things. So, uh, so the Gen Y here, the, uh, the Gen Y, and here the next one, the Chromebook, because schools in Malaysia here were provided with uh, Chromebooks. So depending on the uh, uh, students and teachers population in your school, so you could provide it with either uh, one or two Chrome um, mobile labs, they call it the mobile laboratories, whereby uh, in one mobile lab, uh, it will be equipped with uh, 41 uh, Chromebooks. So you have to do the Chromebook training for the teachers and the, you have to teach them all the Google apps and the kind of thing, and I'm, <laughs> I'm learning myself, so there's no end to learning. So, uh, so you can see even some of these teachers who are really, I mean, uh, uh, in the beginning were very resistant to, to change. They're slowly asking, you know, sometimes they, they, they see me, they, they do ask me, so how do you do this, how do you do that? So you can see slowly people are changing. But of course, in, in, as in any case, there will always be some hardcore ones, but I think eventually, it's just like it's not for us to, to say we, we don't want to change in the kind of thing because it's the market usage and the demand for the technologies that's making us change. We've just got no choice. Change is inevitable in that sense. Just like at the beginning when I talk about the phone, the dial up phone, use the dialer. So that, it's not that uh, we don't want to use this or use that, but then nobody is using that kind of phone. People are using smartphone and that kind of thing. We just have got to go along. With the flow, right? Sometimes, of course, it, it can hit us as just like a tidal wave, and, 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 and that's when uh, it's too strong and people can't take it. So uh, I think that's why people say uh, they want to do things, uh, especially change, use baby steps, one thing at a time, right? 
Right. And based on change in the classroom, just to sum up everything, I think these are the things that we actually have to uh, uh, sort of consider. The correct mindset, it's time, or to, to invest in the mindset. Uh, what do I mean by that? Yeah, time to invest in the mindset. Uh, maybe we can think about what are the game changes, you know, what kind of game changing uh, statement that we are making for ourselves. For instance, when we wake up, do we tell ourselves um, what kind of, a, uh, what, what is going on in my mind? Or when we meet with a group of people, you know, uh, we are doing certain things, do we just go along with the, those kind of mindsets that they have or we just want to break away from that and try to do something? And, you know, because there's no way we can actually ask people to change their mindset. It's, actually for them. So they, everyone has their own schedule on when they actually want to change. All right. So educate, understand, and implement here. So that's the correct mindset. So if you have a very positive mindset, I think you'll educate yourself, you'll learn things, and you try to understand, and you will implement. All right. And of course, the networking and all these uh, what PLN or whatever terms that we use now, those are very important. For instance, I learned a lot from N, right, even just now. Just to be, uh, upload the uh, well, okay, the slides here. So it's having problems here to ask and how to do this and that. So uh, I think the best part of it is uh, uh, when it comes to learning, I think uh, we shouldn't be sort of like a, uh, too shy about it. And when we need help, we really need to sort of ask you when there will be a lot of people who are willing to help us. Right. So uh, thank you, and you have really helped me a lot, and I learned a lot from you and also from some other uh, educators and uh, even my colleagues, all right? and even the students. Huh. So the students, we actually learn alongside with the students. In fact, when we're training the students and teachers, it was easier to train the students than the teachers for the simple reason because they were born during that time when the computers were around. So that's why the Gen Y. Because the teachers, some of them are uh, baby boomers and Gen X. But of course, there are those, those who are Gen Y. But it doesn't mean that if they are Gen Y, they're really good because sometimes they can have a. Uh, it's all about their mindset. It's a negative or positive, and also the kind of attitudes and perceptions towards learning that they have, and the kind of expectations. Right. So the tools that you will need, it's all here. You can see for yourself. And I think this is the part choosing a niche or forming learning circles that we really have to look at. Because sometimes when 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 I get connected with people, it, it was like a. It, it's sort of like a, it's not very focused, and sometimes people sort of tend to, tend to sort of like a, uh, if they're not focused, you don't really know what we are really doing, and then we lost sense of, uh, in that sense of like, uh, even though it's broad based uh, education, we need to have some form of like uh, understanding, common understanding, okay, we are doing this, we are we heading to us too, rather than uh, you know, working aimlessly not knowing where we can't see the tunnel at the, at the, at the light at the end of the tunnel. Right, what to do next? So is there a perfect time to start? I don't know whether you agree with me. So is there a perfect time to start? Uh, I, I don't think there's such thing as a perfect time. So, uh, it, it, I, I mean like now, it, I mean we go to, uh, I mean over here in Malaysia, then we do go to coffee shops and uh, uh, these uh, public places, they, we see even families sitting together. Uh, it can be a quite, a quite a sad thing when you see that they don't actually communicate with each other even though they are sitting there face to face and they should be communicating using all the gadgets. So, uh, and somehow society is moving towards that direction. So when it comes to uh, change, uh, is that a perfect time to start? Changing, I, I think it's very difficult to say. Like I said, all of us have our own schedule for our the change in the, uh, in the mindset uh, to, to take place. But uh, sometimes, I, but I think that if, if we keep on delaying, then we'll find that we have be left even much further behind. Because I remember that when I first came back from New Zealand, we, we were, I understood that we were very much behind time. And, it, and even now, it's even worse if you if, if keep on saying that, oh, I'm not going to change, I'm going to change only tomorrow, then more people change. But I think that's also not for us to say because it's the, the market usage and the demand for the technology that is actually making this change. I think that is the most powerful one, uh, powerful uh, kind of a, a force that will make us change. All right, so thank you very much. And uh, I don't know, I'm not really sure, uh, uh, but <laughs> I've uh, really conveyed uh, 
what I should actually convey here, but I think I've tried my best, and I know that still you are, and there's lots more to that I can learn from anyone. I'm learning every day from my students. So I thank you everyone for being here. Um, so, yeah, uh, maybe I uh, hope to see you all one day in person. Uh, I, I think that is always the, the part that is the uh, powerful of all these human beings. Veronica, thank you very much. Um, but, uh, a very interesting the, the session. We've certainly been a pioneer in the use of computers. And in an Asian country, uh, where often we don't think uh, such innovation would take place. So well done, Veronica. Now, Shambles has a couple of questions. So, Shambles, we'll give you access to the microphone. Would you like to ask them, please? You've got about three minutes, and then we'll need to uh, close this room because the next couple of sessions will start. So, Shambles, grab the mic and ask your question. Veronica, hi, it's Chris, uh, Chris Smith here, Shambles Guru. I'm actually in Chiang Mai, North Thailand, and uh, I've actually done some work in KL. But my question is, uh, well, uh, my question is, most, when I visit Malaysia, I see most students have smartphones. And uh, so my question is, uh, they have smartphones and tablets, many of the students I see. Are schools embracing this? How are schools um, are pulling in, or are they pulling in, the fact that students already have these quite powerful devices? Simple question. Um, and you have 90 seconds to ask the interview uh, question from now. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, yeah, it's, it's students who have bought, or their parents have bought, smartphones or tablets. So the students have powerful internet connected devices now. Are the schools making use of that? What are the school policies regarding mobile phones and mobile Sorry, devices? Uh, can you repeat the question? Sorry, I didn't quite really get that part. Can you repeat the question? Is it about the using of the mobile phone? Yeah, all right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there are actually two sides to this debate, and uh, there's a lot of things here. Uh, I mean, it's like, uh, how would you say that? Uh, because a lot of things here is being controlled by the um, uh, politicians as, as so and also authorities. So it's like, uh, I mean, if I do not want to talk about this, I think it's a, a lot about uh, changing people's mindsets. You know, this, uh, and because at the one hand, there's a lot of misuse as well when uh, uh, students in, in, at home, the kind of things that they were they are doing at home. And so uh, I, I think it's, it's still people's mind, mindset that have not changed. So that's why uh, the schools are, uh, sort of not uh, uh, implemented this change yet, because because uh, the, the, because I think like like I say I think uh, people are afraid to take up this uh, challenge of uh, how to deal uh, uh, with problems with, uh, regarding uh, usage of phones in the school if uh, if any problems were to crop up. So that's why uh, I think it's still quite a long way to go. But I think from VLE. Even with fraud VLE, there's a lot of resistance in that. So, uh, yeah, so I think it's just a, I think it's still a long, long way to go. Veronica, thank you so much. Unfortunately, it's time to finish this session. A big round of applause to you. You love your topic. And time wins again, but maybe we get Veronica back to talk to us again in one of our other Australia E-Series webinars. So thanks again, yeah, Veronica. Uh, Lovely, uh, I mean, wonderful topic, beautiful slides, well presented. So we've got two more sessions starting right now. So one is actually on the use of mobile phones, and our presenter is actually from Saudi Arabia. 
and we also have a Spanish speaking session. So if we really want to um, go outside our comfort zone, it's always great to try and understand what they're presenting to us too. So thanks again, Veronica. Um, I'm going to close the room in two minutes. So if everyone could just save what they need to. And um, thank you again, Veronica. <laughs>